So the passenger side is wearing on the inside, the driver's side is wearing on the outside. I brought it in because uh, I thought maybe the axle bearing was going on the passenger side, but I jacked it up. I jacked it up and everything is nice and tight. You know, there's nothing going on there. The bearing's still good. Uh, so originally I just thought it was the axle bearing going on the passenger side. Uh, and then I looked at the wear patterns on the back of the car. So the inside is wore out, you know, quite a bit more than the outside. And then the driver's side here is wore out quite a bit more on the outside than the inside. You know, you can see the you can see the wear bar there is almost right at the tread on the outside. Middle it's a little bit more, and on the inside it's a little bit more. So my theory on that is that because this car has been driven the majority uh, on those tires with just uh, a driver in the car. So an extra 200 pounds has been on the one side of the car. And for a car that only weighs 1800 pounds, an extra 200 pounds on one side uh, could make a difference. Especially so if uh, the tire pressure is low on one side. So what happens when you got the extra couple hundred pounds on that side? Every time you go over a bump, that tire squishes a little bit more, angling the swing arm down uh, on the driver's side a little bit more than the passenger side. And then you get the wear on the outside of the tire on the driver's side, and you get the wear on the inside of the tire on the passenger side. So imagine a lever. So this nice flat bar, this side's going down a half inch. So what that does is it, it changes the angle of the tires. You know, so, so that side, this side down on the lever, half an inch, camber, that tire is changed, tire's angled in, that tire's angled out. So it's like a, a straight bar. Every time you lift one side of the bar, you know, the, the tires at the end are going like this. The only way to get around the wear is to have, uh, the weight in the car equally balanced out and maintain uh, proper tire pressure in the rear tires. Another thing you could do is get skinnier tires. Uh, these tires are the same size, but uh, these tires are uh, designed a little bit different. You see how the edges are curved? So the, the mating surface on the road is, you know, maybe only that wide as opposed to these ones, you know, it's like pretty wide. So there's, uh, with these ones, there's more contact surface on the road, so the wear is gonna be more visible. Uh, these ones are a lot narrower, so it won't be as visible. Uh, these are the ones I had on there. They're uh, Bridgestone Blizzax. Uh, these new ones, oh, this is for the other car. I'm borrowing a tire. These ones are the Kimono uh, Four Season uh, Solus. Uh, what is that? HA 32s One thing you could do if you want to uh, fix the camber on your car and uh, I'm not condoning this you do it at your own risk so So your uh, bearing and your hub assembly everything held on by those four bolts three four if you really wanted to uh, depending on how you want to adjust your camber you could take out the two top bolts. You could take out the two bottom bolts. Uh, I would loosen all four off. Uh, and then you take out the two bolts where you want to adjust your camber. And you get the two washers. Got to be exactly the same size. Uh, the same thickness. Uh, probably don't need them to be too thick. They can be just little thin washers. And the... Uh, grab a chisel you pry that out a little bit shove your washer in there between the back of your hub and uh, the swing arm uh, mount there and then you just tighten it up and that'll uh, give you a little bit extra camber out or a little bit extra camber in uh, if you want camber in you put the washers on the bottom so you want camber out you put the washers on the top so uh, other than uh, welding, other than cutting and welding and uh, realigning everything, uh, 
that's probably the easiest way to adjust your camber. Uh, just remember, uh, if your habits do change, so, so say you adjust the camber, uh, so you're not getting the weird wear pattern on the tire, and then your driving habits do change, like all of a sudden you get a girlfriend, and now there's two people in the car everywhere you're going, just uh, keep in mind that it's going to wear on the other side now. So uh, if the wear isn't too bad, I suggest just leave it the way it is, because uh, life changes, and uh, you don't want to be going back in there and removing washers and putting washers. Uh, you know, tires are not that expensive. So, uh, yeah. And if, unless it's really bad, uh, I would just leave it. So here's a picture of the rear bearing and hub assembly. So what you'd be doing is uh, you'd be putting a spacer in between uh, two of those uh, bolt holes there. And it still has this lip to sit on, so... Uh, as long as you just adjust your camber just a little bit, like put a super, super skinny washer in there, uh, it probably is not going to cause any problems. But uh, don't do it because uh, who am I? Don't listen to me. But if you have, if you really insist on adjusting your camber, uh, you have to pull out the CV axle, and then your four bolts. You got two bolts at the top, and then two bolts at the bottom. So once you get your CV axle out, then you can take those bolts out. Uh, just uh, loosen the ones on the bottom or loosen the ones on the top. Uh, and then wherever you want to uh, adjust your camber, you just uh, take those bolts out, pry it out a little bit, shove your really thin little washers in there. Just remember, a, little, a tiny little washer will make a big difference. So uh, make sure your washers are the same size and then uh, bolt it back together. And uh, hopefully your camber will be close. Uh, but I can't say do that because uh, you know, you're, this is uh, the hub assembly for the wheel. So, you know, it's not how it was designed uh, to be adjusted. So I can't say do that. So if you want to do that, that's 100% your decision. Uh, it's not very difficult to do. So don't do it because uh, I pointed it out. Uh, do it because uh, you know you really want to adjust the camber on your rear tires and there's no real other way of doing it other than uh, cutting and welding or uh, heating something up red hot and hitting it with a hammer. Uh, there's no other real way to adjust the camber. So uh, yeah. Uh, that's one way you can do it. Just uh, unbolt your uh, rear axle hub assembly, throw a couple washers on the one side, tiny washers. The bigger the washer, the more unsafe it's gonna be. <laughs> so use just little thin washers and a little thin washer uh, will make a big difference in the camber. Uh, if it's just a small issue, I suggest not even touching it, just uh, buy new tires, you know, it's not that big a deal. But uh, yeah, if you, have an issue with your car, it's always been bugging you, you want to change the camber, uh, that's the easy way to do it. There's your rear hub assembly there. So if you want to adjust your camber that way, uh, throw your washer on the inside instead of the outside. And that way you're not going to have a crack uh, filling up with uh, all kinds of uh, sand and road debris there. At least uh, if it's inside the hub, then it's going to be a little bit protected. I'm just uh, given a solution, uh, easy solution other than welding and grinding if uh, someone wants to adjust the rear camber on a car. You could also make uh, some kind of metal wedge for in there also. Never know, they might even sell, uh, sell some kind of wedge kit where it's thicker on the one side than it is on the other side and you just slide it in there. Possibly, but anyway. Yeah, a thin little washer would probably do the trick too.